All right. Remember when you first started coding and your teacher asked you to create a pattern like this. And then there was always that one friend with 10x smartness who just casually dropped a print statement and walked away like a coding genius. Meanwhile, but coding is not just about getting the results. It's about how you think. So let's start by understanding what pattern problems are and why we need to learn them. Pattern problems involve printing designs using characters, numbers or symbol in a specific structure. For example, take a look at this pattern. It's a right angle triangle made with stars. But why should we care about these problems? While they may seem simple, but they actually help us developing our logical thinking and improve our understanding of loops. Now let's see how this works. If we set the value of n as 4, the program prints 4 rows of the pattern. If we change the value to 10, it prints 10 rows, still keeping the same structure. This teaches us how to control the loops, adjust values and maintain consistency in the pattern we create. When I first started solving pattern problems, I used to think maybe should I print the second line first and then the first line or maybe print the second column first and then go back. But that's not how it works. The compiler moves row by row and once a row is done, you can't go back. So how do we print the pattern? We use one for loop to go through each row and inside that we use more for loops to print the characters in each row. The number of inner loops depend on the sub parts of the pattern. For example, in this pattern, we can divide it into two parts, one for spaces and one for stars. So we will use one outer loop to go through each row and two inner loops, one for spaces and one for star. That's how we figure out the number of loops we need. Now comes the best part of the video that you have been waiting for. The trick to solve any pattern problems. Step 1. Start by drawing a box around the pattern and give it indexing like 0, 1, 2. Step 2. Divide the shape into sections and assign each section a number. This helps you to figure out how many inner loops you will need. Step 3. Now observe how the pattern changes with each step. The most important part is to come up with an expression that gives you the right result at every step. It might sound confusing right now, but don't worry. Once we solve the problem, it will all make sense. Let's start with the pyramid pattern. This example will clear up a lot of your doubts. As the trick says, first make a box around it and give it indexing. Then divide the shape. For this pyramid, we can divide it into two parts, spaces and stars. The more you divide it, the more inner loops you will need. So divide accordingly. Now you might wonder about the spaces at the end of each row. Do we need to print them? Actually no. After printing the stars, when we move to the next line, it automatically creates the spaces. So no need to worry about that. Next step is to observe how the pattern changes with each row. In the first section, which is spaces, the first row has three spaces, then two, then one, and finally zero. So the pattern is three, two, one, and zero. For the second section, which is stars, the first row has one star, the second has three, the third has five, and the last row has seven stars. So the pattern is one, three, five, and seven. That's how each section is changing. The trickiest part of pattern problems is come up with a condition that work for all rows. When I get confused while thinking of conditions, I make a table. On the left, I write the row numbers and in the center, I try different conditions until something fits. And trust me, this process really boosts your logical thinking. Now let's see the expressions. For spaces, in the first row, there are three spaces and the formula n minus i minus 1 works perfectly. Let's break it down. For first row, i is 0 and we are taking n as 4. So 4 minus 0 minus 1 is 3. For second row, i becomes 1. So 4 minus 1 minus 1 is 2. For third row, i becomes true so 4 minus 2 minus 1 is 1 for fourth row i becomes 3 so 4 minus 3 minus 1 is 0 as you can see we are getting the same numbers as we observed earlier so the expression for spaces is n minus i minus 1 now for stars if you can't come up with an expression right away write the numbers down 1 3 5 and 7 on a paper and try different condition for each row in this case the formula is 2 into i plus 1 works perfectly for first row, i is 0, so 2 into 0 plus 1 is 1. For second row, i is 1, so 2 into i plus 1 is 3. For third row, i is 2, so 2 into 2 plus 1 is 5. For fourth row, i is 3, so 2 into 3, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. So the expression for stars is 2 into i plus 1. Now let's code this pattern. I will use C++, but you can do it in Java or any other languages. It is very similar. First, create a variable for number of rows and take the user input. As I mentioned before, we will use one outer loop to go through each row and two inner loops, one for spaces and one for stars. Run the outer loop row number of times. In the space loop, we will run it n-i-1 times. 
and print a space in it. In the star loop, we will run it 2 into i plus 1 times and print a star in it as we have seen these conditions before. After that, add an end L to move to the next line. And there you go. In simple manner, what we are doing is in the first row, the space loop print 3 spaces and the star loop print 1 star. Then move to the next line. The space loop print 2 spaces and the star loop print 3 stars. The pattern continues accordingly. A lot of people find this pattern difficult. But if you follow these steps, you will be able to solve this pattern problems easily. Here is something you should think. What if I told you, we could print the same pyramid in reverse order with just a small tweak. Sounds tricky right? But it is actually not. Let's do a quick challenge. I will give you 10 seconds, grab pen and paper, see if you can figure out what needs to change in the code to flip the pyramid. Ready? Go. Time's up. If you figured it out, awesome. If not, no worries. All you need to know is reverse the loop that controls the rows. Start the outer loop from N and run it until it is greater than 0, decreasing it at each step. That's it. The next type of pattern you will likely come across is the hollow pattern. Specifically, the hollow diamond pattern people find it's very difficult. Before we jump into the hollow version, let's first create the filled diamond, like this one. Following our trick, start by drawing a box around the shape and give it some indexing. Now divide the shape into parts. It is slightly different because for n is 4, you will need to print 7 rows. So let's split the shape into two main sections and solve them separately. Part 1 is very similar to the pyramid pattern. We have already built it. So we can simply copy and paste the previous code. So that's part 1 done. For part 2, we apply the trick again. Treat this as a separate problem. Draw a box around the shape, give it indexing and divide it into spaces and stars. Have you noticed there is one less row in part 2 compared to part 1. For n is equal to 4, part 1 has 4 rows but part 2 only has 3 rows or n minus 1 rows. So the outer loop for part 2 will run n minus 1 times. Now let's break down the inner loops. For spaces, the inner loop will run i times. For stars, you can think of the condition as this. Now let's code it. The outer loop for part 2 runs n minus 1 times. The inner loop for spaces runs i times. The inner loop for stars runs. And don't forget the endl condition for the next line. So we have built our diamond pattern. But now let's make it hollow. For that, grab your pen and paper again and observe the pattern carefully. We don't need to change anything about the spaces. The only thing we need to adjust is the stars. We want to print only those stars which are at the beginning and at the end of the rows. I came up with this. If k is at 0 or 2 into i, it will print a star. Otherwise, it will print a space. These are the starting and ending position of the shape. Let's test it. In the star loop, we will add this condition. If k is equal to equal to 0 or k is equal to equal to 2 into i, print a star. Otherwise, print space. And there we go. It works. Now, for part 2, we do the same thing again. The condition for the star loop will be k is equal to equal to 0 for the start and end position. Just copy this logic. Decrease 1 for the last row and it's done. And there you have it, your hollow diamond pattern. Once you get this, you will be able to solve this kind of problems very easily. Now, let's move to the last type of pattern problems. It is not that different but instead of stars, here we are printing numbers or characters. One popular example is Floyd's triangle. It is a right angle triangle where number increases at each step. Let's quickly apply our trick. Draw a box around the shape and give it some indexing. No need to divide the shape as it is very simple problem. Just analyze how it changes. In the first row we have one number, in the second row we have two and so on. So for n is equal to 4, we have 1, 2, 3 and 4 number across the rows. To code the shape, the outer loop will run n times. The inner loop will run i times as it is increasing simultaneously with the rows. And don't forget to write endl to move to the next line. This will create a right angle triangle with stars. If we have to write numbers in it, we have just need to create a variable that start from 1 and increase it at every step. In the print statement, write the variable name and there you go. We have just created a right angle triangle with numbers increasing in it or we can say that we have created the Floyd's triangle just by changing the print statement. Now let's move to the something a bit trickier. In Pascal's triangle, each number is the sum of the two numbers directly above it and the first and the last number of each row are always 1. Firstly, 
make the structure of the triangle using our trick. For spaces, the condition is n minus i minus 1 times. For the numbers, we will run the inner loop i times as it is increasing with the row number. For the first row, it has one number. For the second row, it has two numbers and so on. This gives us the pyramid shape. Now for the numbers in the Pascal's triangle, declare a variable num, then update it using the formula num is equal to num into i minus j divided by j plus 1. You can dry run this formula on paper to see how it works and it will give us the Pascal's triangle. Finally, let's look at the character patterns. It is similar to that we have done before, but instead of stars or numbers, we will print the letters. Apply our trick again. The outer loop will run n times. The inner loop will run i times. As this will create a right angle triangle. Now, start with the character A and increase it with each step. And there you go. We have covered different type of patterns and with practice, you will be able to solve all this confidently. And we have finally completed it. The more you practice, the better you will get at thinking through these pattern problems. This is my first time making such a long video. I would love to hear your thoughts about this. Comment below and don't forget to subscribe the channel. See you next time.